Hi, I'm Allison Meyer, and these are my friends Alexis Cruz, oh no, and Bailey Mount. <laughs> and this is Bad Fan Fiction Fridays, where we aim to bring you the good, the bad, and the ugly of fan fiction. So tell me, guys, what's Fem Slash? going right into it? Yeah, let's just do it. Let's dive right in. What's Fem Slash? Um, it's just like Yaoi, only with women. Or, well, it's like, sort of. it's like M Slash, except girls. So it's just, quote unquote, lesbian relationships. Oh, really? So who's writing these, these Fem Slashies? You know, probably not actual lesbians. I think it's safe to assume that. That's never the case. It's probably yeah. It's probably another like case where it's the author trying to explore some idea of sexuality and it just becomes a thing. I've always just assumed it was like guys, but I don't know. I think it's girls maybe that are confused about their own sexuality or just are like, oh yeah, I shipped these two characters. So women are the ones who usually write it more. Like it's yeah. weird. You can usually just be like, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's not going to be a guy. I don't know. It's weird. I mean, I've, I've never actually met any guys who write fan, fan fiction right? before. Well, yeah. So, who knows? I don't. We need some hard scientific fact, you know? Yeah. Studying it. New feature idea. New feature idea. <laughs> <laughs> New sociology idea. <laughs> All right, so we do have some lovely fanfics for you guys today. Let's start off with Alexis, since the topic was fem slash. What'd you find for us? So, both my fanfics are from the Sailor Moon fandom. Um, I'm like a super big fan of Sailor Moon, and if you don't know about the series, it's... It, it's basically like... Power Rangers, but they're all girls, and they transform into like these cute little outfits, and then they teach you about friendship and stuff. But not really. It's hard to explain. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a very popular show. They... There is a canon fem slash uh, couple and relationship, and that is... So the characters, their their heroine names are based off of the planets of the solar system. So Sailor Uranus and Sailor Neptune, they're a couple and they're canon. Um, however, the the one that I focused on, it was Sailor Moon herself and a Sailor Scout from, or Sailor Soldier from a different star system. And this person's name was Seiya. So in the first fanfic, it is called Fate Has Nothing To Do With It, Baby. By That's a fun name. Yeah. Baby. By SXT Suna. So I don't know why the X was needed, but I, I guess I don't know. But you want to be cool and edgy, so you got to have all the letters. All the edge. So it's only one chapter, and it looks like it was supposed to be a series, but the author gave up. Gave up, I guess. Because <laughs> this was published in 2015. I know that feeling. <laughs> yeah, like this, this just have, hasn't been picked up again. So this is kind of canon, but it it diverts a little. So it's during the last season of Sailor Moon, and wait, what's the summary? There is no summary. There's sad. no summary. There's no summary, which is That's sad. Lame. I wanted like the, yeah. the really awkward like here's what's going to happen <laughs> yeah. without giving too much away. Like all good things in life. Like you think there would be a summary because it is on fanfiction.net, but there isn't. So I, I guess I have to give my own summary. So it's in a trying to make it as as horrible as possible. Yeah, it's an AU where um, Sailor Moon's boyfriend broke up with her. Oh no! Like they're supposed to be the end couple, so that that was crazy, I guess. Uh, he broke up with her, and now she's single, and f she and ready to mingle. I guess right? she's ready to mingle because she's ready to go. She she starts high school. Um, yeah, she's finally in high school, and then this this new I think guy because she. A guy or girl, I'm not sure, because they don't reveal if she's a girl or not. She's just wearing boy clothes, and they keep describing her as a man. But this new person comes into the school, and, like, they're flirting it up already with Sailor Moon. And everyone's just like, yo, who's this person? Are you ready to move on? Oh, my gosh. And then, you know, Sailor Moon's just like, I'm not ready to move on, blah, blah, blah. And Bailey, why are you making funny faces? My belly started talking, and it's not a part of this podcast. Oh, dang. Oh, no. <laughs> It's okay, go. The belly talks. But yeah, like, long story short, her boyfriend broke up with her. And now she found a new person. I, oh, I'm, dang, she's ready to go. She's ready to mingle. And 
I don't know, for me, I felt like she was super out of character because if you watch the show or you read the manga, like... Wait, so is this a good fic or a bad fic? It's a bad one because A, Sailor Moon's super out of character, and B, they haven't really described if the character Seiya, so the potential love interest, mm -hmm. is a man or a woman. Wait, so then how do you... If this is only one chapter, then how do you know it's, it's Seiya? No, this says the name Seiya. But the problem is, like, you don't know if it's a boy or a girl, because they describe the person Wait, as... Wait, so it's an OC? No, this is, like, an actual canon character. I'm so confused. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is, like, an actual, like, character in the series. All right, give, give, just, let's just move on. Give us a, an example of the writing, please. Oh, God. Oh, God? Oh, God. Oh, God. Say so it turned to look at Usagi, and Usagi is Sailor Moon's uh, civilian name. With an inquisitive face. Oh boy, what was it now? Oh boy. Oh boy! <laughs> Seiya leaned in, and Usagi gave in to facing her new classmate, Odongo, which I. What? Some Japanese word. I, I think it means dumpling. Oh. Odongo, do you have a pencil I could borrow? Mine ran out of lead. See, I thought she was saying, oh, dang. Oh, dango. Oh. It's spelled Odango. Is it really? Yeah. Odango. 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 <laughs> That's my new expression. Oh, dango! Oh, dango. Something just happened. Oh, dango! But yeah, so he says, or they say that, and then Usagi replies, well, fine, whatever, but what's with the nickname? Do you think you're being original or something? And it's just the back and forth. Nah, I think it fits you because my hair, you guessed it. Ha ha, you're right. Ha uh ha, -huh. you're right. Ha ha ha. I'm feeling, I'm feeling the energy. Are you sure this isn't a good fic? Uh, uh, no. Oh, dango. Oh, dango. Oh, dango. So it's official. We're on an informal basis. <gasps> Usagi scowled and handed over her pencil. Fine. It's so dry. <laughs> and it's... Why? Like, I feel as if the author thought that this would be good because it's like... Oh, boy, dango. Like, person swoops in and it's just like, Hey, Ding. you broke up? I'm a slide in the DMs. <laughs> <laughs> like... It, yeah, why? Like, I ship this couple, but also I'm just like, no, why? this is terrible. Why? Don't, All right. don't do this to me. <laughs> do, so, do you have another fic for us? Or oh, not? yeah, this one's, oh. this one's a doozy. So this, oh, dear. This is from Archive of Our Own, and it's called Sparks by Alley Cat. Because them sparks are going to fly? Sparks are going to fly, man. I'm ready. Oh, God. Where is the summary? So... In this one, it's uh, an AU or a crossover of the Sailor Moon universe and the Hunger Games universe. Okay. So it's all the Sailor Moon characters. And everyone's gonna die. Everyone's gonna die, because guess what? It's the Hunger Games. <gasps> surprise, surprise. Spoilers! Yeah. So the summary for this is, my name is Serena Tusk Tuskino. Like, literally Tusk. Ooh, Tusk. Yeah. My name is Serena Tuskino. Does she dress up in a tusk, in a in a walrus suit? I don't know, man. No. Okay, it's not that kind of crossover. No, I'm um, <gasps> Tusk fan fiction. So, listener, there is a movie, so you can understand what we're talking about. Just quick sidebar. Uh, there's this movie called Tusk. It's a body horror, I guess, kind of type movie. Yeah. Where basically this guy goes and he gets captured by this other dude who's obsessed with walruses because one saved his life. So he tries to turn the other guy into a walrus by sewing him into a walrus suit. That's made out of people. That, that's made out of people. And I don't want to look for fan fiction like that. I do. I'm I gonna... haven't even seen the movie. I don't want to. Seen... I have it on DVD. I got it for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> and suddenly Bailey is engaged in the conversation. I'm sorry. I'm hungry. <laughs> She's hangry, y'all. All right. Sorry. Alexis, continue. So, yeah, she states her name. Though I'm known as Bunny to all my friends and family. I live in District 10 of Panem, the livestock oh, district. Geez. I am 16 years old, and I don't want to die. Not that that matters anymore. I'm just letting you know. My life was flipped upside down when I became- My life was flipped upside down! I don't know how to do the song for the thing but do Hicks, but my, my mind went straight to Fresh Pins and I'm yeah. sorry. Her, her life was flipped upside down when- So back to first person. So my life was flipped upside down when I became a trip. When I became tribute. <laughs> when I became tribute. In the Hunger Games. I became tribute. That is what happened. Oh, God. So, 
my issue with this as a Sailor Moon fan, she kept, the author kept going through different versions of their names. What? Yeah, so like they have their Japanese names, mm-hmm. you know, and then they have their American or... Uh, Americanized yeah. name that they use for like the cartoons. Yeah, they have the American name for when they showed this show in America. And then they also have their international names. So the international names are actually different. So like in Europe That's and... so many names. Yeah. So in like Europe and Mexico and stuff, it's it's so different. So she just keeps on going through. Yeah. She can't, she can't choose. She can't decide. She can't decide on like which set of names to use. So she'll, she'll do like... Maybe it was an artistic choice. I even know. Like Maybe she was like, this is going to make a point. I'm going to make it by confusing the reader. But that's the point. You're supposed to be confused. I'm sorry. I've been taking my, my short story writing class that I'm taking. I just, I have to question everything that I know. And I'm like, are they doing this on purpose? Are they doing this because art? Or what is happening? Writing? I don't know. So like for the main character. I'm bringing it into yeah. fanfic now. So like for the main character, they used her English name. Uh-huh. But they tried to use her Japanese last name. Yeah. Which is Tsukino, but they spelled it Tuskino. Tuskino. So yeah, there's that. And then like <laughs> And then like Tuskino. <laughs> and like every mostly every character's name is the English version except for um the civilian names of Sailor Uranus and Sailor Neptune for some reason. Mm-hmm. Like their names are still Japanese. Japanese. So and then Sailor Pluto's name is in English. And I didn't... Uh, Pluto's not a planet! Shut up! It still is in my heart. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like, Sailor Pluto has an English name. And, like, I never knew what her English name was because when I grew up, I never heard it. Because I was a bi- just a babe when I watched the show. Well, we baby. A wee babe. A wee babe. So I had to look it up on, like, a s- separate Sailor Moon wiki, and that was a trip. <laughs> uh, but yeah, she had different names. And then she kept the Japanese name of two characters... Um, that weren't, besides Sailor Uranus and Sailor Neptune, she kept the love interest Japanese name since they never had an English name. So many things. Yeah, it's just all types of wrong. And, oh man. Oh man. Why is it a Hunger Games AU? Why would anyone ever want to put their characters in a Hunger Games AU? I feel like I've I've never actually read a Hunger Games AU, but I've seen them around. I've seen them around. I don't even know why they'd exist. Like, the uh, the Harry Potter AU. Because people like pain and suffering. Dear God. Yeah. So... It, she doesn't meet the love interest until the third chapter, and there's four chapters so far. Um, Can we get the the title names of the chapters? There aren't title names, sadly. What is it's with just, this person? She only has one title chapter, and it's like, actually, no, she she does have title. I take this back. Chapter one is just chapter one. That's lame. Chapter two is the capital. Any bad, good bad fanfic needs to have really <laughs> bad names for their chapters. I'm kind of really like feeling let down right now <laughs> by this author. That's why it's bad. It's bad. It's it's bad even for the bad. It's making me sad. It's bad kind of sad. Yeah. Sad, bad. Bad, sad? Sad, bad. Spad. 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 <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's like chapter one, then chapter two, the capital. Chapter three, training. And then chapter four, interviews. And I've never read the Hunger Games book, but it, I feel like this is following the storyline The storyline story so far. So yeah, right off the bat, it's Reaping Day, chapter one. Oh jeez. She gets taken away. There's sadness. There's sadness. Some more sadness. Uh, does, Children die. Does sadness. Kat- does Katniss call her mom mommy? I no. I didn't read the books no. or watch. Did you read it? No, she calls her mom. Mother dear. She calls her mom when she even references her at all. She just tells her mom to take care of Prim because ever since her dad died, her mom's just kind of been like, I'm here. Yeah, I'm not here. really. Oh. I have children. So for, for this one, she calls her, her mother Mommy, and mommy. That, was, that was really mommy. awkward. Mommy! Oh, and Daddy. You have to threaten me at knife point to call my mother Mommy. Mom! Yeah, Even d- when I was a little baby. No, I called her Mother. <laughs> so formal. Jeez. That's mother? Thought, my dad always said, go to your mother, and my mom would go, go to your daddy. The, oh. There was a disconnect there. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit. They're like, oh, hey, Daddy. And then there was Mother. Hello, Hello, Mother. mother. So, you know how for the Hunger Games, there's the love triangle between Katniss, yep. um, Peter, uh-huh. Peter, and Pita. Peter? No, Peter, Pita. you know, one Peter R. Clark. <laughs> <laughs> who's, who's no one's going to get that joke, but thanks for putting it in there. <laughs> who's the third one? Gail. Gail? I was going to say Dean for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> and Dean Winchester, you know. Yeah. Peter, yeah. Dean, and um, what's what's her face? 
Lawrence. And Jennifer Katie. Lawrence. And Jennifer Lawrence. So yeah, there's that love triangle, and they tried doing that with this crossover. So I'm it's, just feeling spiteful right now. I just want to make fun of all the things. It's bad. So like Serena or Sailor Moon. Williams. Serena Will. Serena, okay. Serena Tuschino. <laughs> See you put the hoodie on. That's how I know you're feeling vindictive. <laughs> <laughs> Easy there, eight mile. Ah! So Sailor Moon, she's supposed to be Katniss, obviously, and then the person that plays Gale is her Gale. her boyfriend within the canon, I guess. Within the Moon universe. In the Sailor Moon universe, her her boyfriend Tuxedo Mask is yeah. Gale, wow. and then the person that plays Peta is uh, Sailor Sailor is Seiya Sailor Starfighter, Sailor. which is the Sailor Scout. Sailor. Yeah, which is a which is the same scout hey, from yeah. a different different star system. But the thing is that Sailor Moon and Seiya aren't in the same district. They're in different districts, but they meet up during training, and that's where they sort it up. <laughs> this this fig is confusing, and I'm tired, and I don't get it. Tuskino. 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 Like, I'm, I'm confused just talking about this, because that's how bad it was. It's just all over the place. My brain hurts only a little bit. Yeah. But you know what? Hopefully Bailey's fix don't hurt me. Oh, boy, oh, man. You're going to be oh, disappointed. Why am I going to be disappointed? Bailey. <laughs> Bailey, don't leave me hanging here. Why am I going to be disappointed? They're Undertale fan fictions. You already know. I do know. Why am I going to be disappointed, if it, Bailey? Because... I was telling I was telling this to Alexis this morning while we were on the ellipticals. Okay. <laughs> Fan fiction for Undertale is really great in your head thinking about it. The idea is good. The implementation of it and all of its implications, awful. Ow. Well, awful. How about you explain the source material to begin with? Okay, so for those of you who don't know, Undertale is an what would be it's RPG, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. RPG based video game where you play this human character that has fallen into this place called the underground and it's completely inhabited by monsters and you can choose to make friends with all of them or murder all of them but you know or normal, murder some of them or make some friends with yeah them. normal people choose to do the true pacifist and make friends with everybody but basically this world is populated by largely non-human or not even really humanoid resembling monsters and um i really should have Taking that into account and remembered when I started reading fanfiction. What? Why? Why? What? Because it's weird if you actually think about it. Because the ship here is Alphys and Undyne, and Alphys is a lizard scientist. Yeah. And Undyne is a fish knight. I always forget that she's like a lizard. I always think she's a dinosaur for some reason. Because she looks like a dinosaur. Okay, so she's she's a, dinosaur. a dinosaur. I don't know. Lizard, dinosaur, knight. They're not human. She's got a big head. Little arms. And anxiety. I mean, they're, they're, they're long enough to be high. Yeah, yeah. But, she, yeah. And so. her very tall fish lover. Yeah, so as you can see, they're not humans. That's why. That's why it's weird, because I forgot that, and I didn't think it'd be relevant. It's relevant. All right, now you're going to have to explain, so give, give us your fix. Give okay. us one at a time, please. Uh, this one is called The Night is Still Young by Benzel de Ha ha, it's a pun. Because Undyne, one of the characters, is a knight. And, and, and they're <laughs> ah, all, it's a play on ah, words. That See? Gross. That's super clever. That sounds gross. I love it already. It's on AO3, and the tags are Alfine, or more like Alfine. Uh -huh. Am I right? Gross. Fluff, and then it says, first time using strap on. Mm. Woo! <laughs> I'm ready. Let's and do you know, this. I was just like, oh, okay. Summary. Undyne had a good idea how she wanted to spend the evening, and she was hoping Alphys wasn't too tired to be game as well. Undyne was feeling particularly mis mischievous. She was going to play with her food tonight. Alphys, however, has other ideas. So, it's just them having a good time. Having, having a good time. time. God damn it. Hanging out together. And then Undyne, at one point, she goes, shall we take this to the bedroom? Wink, wink. She murmured, punctuated with a soft peck to the reptile short snout. <laughs> They're very descriptive. Oh, yeah. Yes, they are. Oh, dear. You sound so salty about that. Oh, my God. Okay. Just get see. to it. I, I... Give me the goods. Okay. Yeah, so they're making out, and they get, like, top naked. And then Alphys goes, wait a minute, I'll be right back. And she comes back with this box. And there's a strap on in the box. <laughs> And Undyne, oh, really? Yeah. And <laughs> Undyne's just looking at it, and she's like, yeah, I can get into this. 
And then all of a sudden, I want to wear it! Alphys blurted out of the blue. Oh. Oh! <laughs> and Undyne is totally for it, which is really weird if you know the character, so it's also kind of OOC. Yeah. I, I don't know. Allison, you know Undertale. Yeah. Can you see Alphys being the one wearing a strap on? I mean, she does seem like the one who's more into the smutty schmutz and the kinkity kinks. I know, but I just, ooh, so explicit. <laughs> so, <laughs> I know, I, I have a way with words. <laughs> uh, so, maybe? I don't know, why is it weirding you out? Why is it weirding you yes, out? Yes, I want you to explain because for the listeners. I don't know, because Alphys, yeah, she's definitely more sexual, I guess, because that's just kind of how her character is implied to be. But because she's so timid and everything, I, that's pretty much why. I just didn't assume she'd be the strap-on wearer. A lot of these fics on AO3 are her trying to be, like, the more dominant one. And Undyne going, yeah, babe, I love you. Be dominant. I support you. <laughs> but then it defeats the purpose because Alphys is like, but I'm supposed to be the one who's being so loud and passionate about this. <laughs> so it gets, it gets weird. So they start to... Have, have sex. Fun times. And it's super, super just, this person's so descriptive. Um, like she, <laughs> she describes Undyne's vagina. Her what? Her vagina. Her and fish vagina. Her fish vagina. An interesting shade of pink in contrast with the blue skin. Ah. But is it just like a, like, like a tail and then there's just like a line? I don't think, does Undyne have a tail? Because Undyne's like one of the mo more humanoid characters. She doesn't have a tail, I don't think. I don't, she doesn't have a tail though. Oh, so she has legs. Yeah, she has legs. Oh. Okay. She has fins on the side of her ears, which is used sometimes in sexy things that so like pull on it. Oh. Which is. Ow. That doesn't sound. That's for like breathing and yeah. stuff. Yeah. And like yeah. sensing. No. Wee, 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 wee. Oh, I forgot about this. As the two began to warm up again, their hands began to roam. Their hands began to roam. I too like my so, roaming. So their, their hands, hands are like roaming while the tube was warming up? No, their hands are, they're having sex and their hands are roaming. And also it's really weird because Alphys is really short and Undyne is very tall. So that's also why I have difficulties with her being uh, the one using the strap on. Because I'm like, how is she going to grab her girlfriend properly? How is Undyne supposed to roam if she's so tiny? Undyne's huge! No, I'm saying, how is she supposed to roam like her girlfriend if the girlfriend's tiny? There's not a lot of space to roam. You just, you just like put one hand down so and it's like, that's the whole body. And I mean, think about, <laughs> think about Alphys, she doesn't have a lot of room to roam either because her arms are so short. So she'd be like, just feeling up, if they were standing, she'd just be feeling up Undyne's oh, no, and No, 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 they're on all fours. So it's like even worse because then Alphys is just kind of like... <laughs> <laughs> she'd just be so tiny, just, just like, like trying to like... She's just kind of like, it's like a really stupid piggyback. <laughs> What? I'm just thinking of piggyback rides. It's bad. Okay, so it goes, um, Alphys' hands ghosted over Undyne's gills, making her shiver. Whereas Undyne had a very decided prize mind. I don't mind. think that's how gills work, but okay. I don't know why, but, like, I went back to the thought of, like, Undyne being bigger than, what What was the? Alphys. Alphys and, like, being bigger than Alphys, and I thought of, like, a chihuahua and then, like, a German shepherd. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, you're not wrong. Then Undyne, she grazed her claws gently down Alphys's back and grasped the base of her tail. Ah. This was another sensitive spot she discovered on their previous encounters. Yeah, so basically she's just jerking off her tail. Oh, man! So, there you go, there's that. But it's also kind of romantic, because Undyne's like, oh, this was great. That's cute. That was nice. No. No? no. What? No. No? It's, there's so much smut. Like, it's all just basically... Smut. Is it porn without plot? That is the bigger question. Where's the other one? Where's the other one? That's the one I told you guys about, the mobsters. Okay, <laughs> the next one's called Take Him for a Ride. Yeah. Bye. The description is, so what if we took the purest, dorkiest, most adorable vanilla ship in the entire world and made them hard-boiled rogues in 1920s New York with semi-automatic machine guns and lipstick? <gasps> Gasp. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, so would they still be non-human? No, they become human. Oh, what? Which they didn't even put, so I was super confused because I was like, yeah, this is even better now. Fish night, mobster. But no, they became humans, which was super obnoxious. I also hate that. When they turn non-humans into humans and they're like, just roll with it. Yeah. Some of the tags. 
al- alternate title, Gays with Guns. Basically the 1920s, except nobody is homophobic. <laughs> Gays with Guns. That's Gays my favorite guns. tag. I okay. like it. I could get into that. They start reading it, and they're torturing a guy who's implied to be Sans. Oh. I don't know, because he crossed them or something. He's a nervous, scruffy man tied to a battered wooden chair. The first woman, a redhead in a pristine suit, stood a full head taller than the blonde beside her. He squinted at their faces and was met with a devilish leer from the redhead and a knowing glare from the blonde. So, Undyne totally kind of talks like a mobster. She's like, we know who you work for, and if he's trying to take us down, he's going to have to try a little harder than this. And it just keeps going. That was... (laughs) <laughs> yeah, the blonde swaggered past her partner, hooking a thumb at the base of her suspenders. Always have, but I have to admit, heh. And that's typed out, heh. Heh heh heh. I'm a little choosy about the ones I follow. Want to know which? Undyne. What do you say we teach him the laws of thermodynamics? What? Because they're going to torture him, and he tries to turn them against each other. And they start making out in front of him because it makes him uncomfortable. Oh. Wait, but what did the tag say, but no one's homophobic? Yeah, but it makes everyone uncomfortable for some reason. But just no one's willing to say, hey, you can't be gay in my 1920s America. But it's still going to make me uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Makes perfect sense. Oh. (laughs) Undyne pressed the Thompson, which is a gun, but before they were just calling it a gun, so they Mm -hmm. just randomly call it a Thompson at this point. A little harder into his cheek, smugly raising an eyebrow. He's telling you to turn me on? Mmm. Spicy. What? (laughs) (laughs) This is the type of thing I would say. It's spicy. The gun is spicy. I don't know what's spicy. The situation is spicy. What? That's a spice people. It's so spicy. Yeah, they just kind of feel each other up in front of him. And Alphys goes, huh, in that case, he and I see eye to eye on one thing, she murmured, deftly unbuttoning Undyne's shirt and slipping a hand inside. Oh. Yeah. She she just just, went for it. She just feels her up and then just unfeels her up. And she's like, (laughs) okay, he's, and then Alphys goes, he's still a fucking snitch. Alpha swore she did a swear. She did a swear word! <laughs> and they just start torturing the guy. I, so. Okay. I don't know. Some AUs are just. Wild! Mobster AU. I, Why is that a thing? Why are mobster AUs a thing? I, I don't there's know. There's nothing romantic about mobsters. Even know. mobsters wouldn't say there's anything romantic about them. They the, the killed the people and they do the stuff. But yeah. they're in tuxedos, yes. so then it's sure, cool. Right. No, they're, they're, yeah, they're in tuxedos or and, suits. like, the, the big, the like... mask? They're zoot yeah, suits. Yeah, tuxedo mask. No, they're in the suits and they got, like, the cool jackets and they're just, like, in the wind. Like, they could, they could, like, push it back and be like, yo, look at me in the slow-mo action. Like, so when, like, I'm wearing a baggy shirt and I can just pull it out behind me and be like, I'm Superman? Like, yeah? Yeah? I mean, like, it, it blows well, dramatic. Does that make me cool? I guess. Can I be cool? You're a cool kid. I'm the coolest kid. <laughs> But yeah, that's, that's a yeah. fun fic, Bailey. You would think they would like the way that they were describing the guns and the touching. You think something would happen with the guns? Nope, no. Ah, I'm kind of glad it's it didn't. Literally, go that just way. like those women that get included in the action films to be sexy, mm. but they like, can't really do anything else. Like that's the whole vibe I was getting. I was like, yeah, they're sexy, but but are do they, they have doing hearts? Anything? What what is their what is their motivations? I don't know. In the second chapter, they're like, I guess they help run a bar? Question mark. Also, no plot is really hammered down, so like, in the second chapter they it's run just, a bar. It's just them doing stuff? They run a bar and they make out in front of a bunch of mobsters who are in their bar causing trouble to make them uncomfortable so they'll leave. Or something like that. Isn't the point of having a bar is to get people to stay? They don't want those guys. I feel like they they were only doing the stuff just, just out of spite. Like, it, it makes me want to think they didn't even like each other. Spite make out? Spite make out. Ooh, let's go. Spite feeling. Whenever you want to get a guy to go away, grab your nearest friend, start making out with them. <laughs> Make them uncomfortable. Make them go. God. That should work in clubs, I, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> hey, baby, how's it going? I'm gay. <laughs> I am, yes. I don't believe you, really? Watch how gay I am. Watch out. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. I feel like that sums up how problematic Femslash is, then. <laughs> yeah, I mean... <sighs> Because, I don't know, do you feel like there, there's, because I feel like some, like, um, M, is it M slash? I don't remember. Yeah, it's supposed called. to be M. It's just called slash. Or slash fix. Yeah, because yeah. it's funny how, what, that why it's like that. You have to have them slash, but then a slash is just two guys. Yeah. It's weird. The guys get everything. <laughs> yeah. It's just, I don't know, because I feel like if you get really good slash fix, then, like, all the characters are really well developed. 
And I feel like you don't really see that in Fem Slash. Which is really weird, because if you sit here and think about it, bad fanfiction, usually the ones we read, they're kind of, like, porny. Like, there's definitely yeah. a lot of eroticism. But the thing is, Fem Slash is not the more popular out of, like, fanfiction porn. It's usually just Slash. But if you look at actual porn, like, visual porn, mm -hmm. it's always lesbian porn that's super... Huh. I can only rebuttal that, and this is just, like, for one certain anime, but I don't know about any others. Um, I was going to bring fan fictions from this anime, but, like, I don't know a lot about it. Uh, it's called Love Live, and it's basically uh, high school girls, they, they come together and they try making a, a music group so they could raise money for their school because their school's failing. And, I mean, apparently in the show, it's, like, really, like, subtly gay, and then so people oh. make like fan fictions out of that and like there's like ships and my one of my friends she's like super into it or she was but since the series ended she kind of it kind of died out but anyways she 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 was super into it and she like sent me really bad smut ones and like i was too scared to read it because i honestly i was just mortified and like i didn't know how to treat it because it's just like i i grew up reading like bad m slash this or slash this whole time and it's like i'm kind of immune to that i guess even though it's still bad but like them slash i haven't explored it and like i'm just scared because i already dealt with like all the bad smut and i'm scared of seeing bad them slash <laughs> oh dear okay so last topic of this episode is how are we feeling i mean we're almost halfway through the semester how are we feeling about the podcast Feeling a little, little. How about you feeling about fanfics and stuff? I ain't happy. You ain't I happy, Bailey. Happy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling good. Good about the semester. The which one? Semester or podcast? What do you want from me? It's podcast. Podcast. Good. I like this. This is fun. Really? You you, know, I, you tend to be kind of quiet. You, you I, say really implying that you don't like this? No, I'm no. I'm just like saying like because me and Alexis were talking earlier, and basically what we were getting is that we're feeling a little jaded just because we're we're looking at these these fanfics that we used to think were like amazing, and then we're realizing maybe they weren't as great as we thought they were, yeah. and it's kind of ruining it for us yeah. a little bit. Because then you're all like. What what is my life now? Who am I? What am I? What's like, going on? Like I had three fanfics that I was following prior to this podcast, and like I had to stop because school and the podcast because it's like I had to focus on other stuff. But one of them I thought it was a really good Harry Potter fanfic, and then I realized a lot of the characters are kind of out of character, and that makes me really sad. And like the the main character or like the OC, she seems like. I don't want to say Mary Sue, but she seems like she has all this power and she could do anything. And it's just, it's weird now that I think back on it. And then there was this really good Oran High School host club fanfic that I was reading. And like the author puts in Japanese words without translation. So it's like, I don't understand what this is supposed to mean or like, what's the deal with this word and why is it so prominent? But okay. But I mean, there's still like the third one, at least it's still going. And I, so far, it's not bad. I, th I think it's still good. It it gives me feels. So there's that. <laughs> yeah, we're feeling we're just feeling a little bit sad. We wanted to share this with you. I'm I'm sorry you're feeling sad. I read fan fiction. Why can't so long you ago. be sad with us? I'm starting to read fan fiction again. As soon as this podcast started up, I was like, I want to read more fan fiction. And then I started reading it. And then I started reading Undertale fan fiction. And I was like, skeleton teeth and goat lips. <laughs> <laughs> I it, exactly. I mean, and then I remembered why I didn't read fan fiction because I'm such a book snob and I'm so particular about how things are written. Well, first of all, it seems like you're reading fanfics where the people aren't humans, so that might be a problem. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Might be your first problem. <laughs> Aside from that, give me a good show with good fan fiction, and I will. I mean, when was the last time I watched a show? I don't know. I watched Hannibal, and you know what happened? It got canceled. <laughs> uh, Should go read some fanfic for that. And just be sad. Every single fanfic is murder husbands. Every murder. single one. There's no variety. I want to know about my canon bisexual couple that escaped and had a kid together. I want to know about them. Jeez. Well, here we are. I'm getting back into it, I swear. <laughs> I feel like... I feel a little manic right now. <laughs> I feel like fanfiction is just like... It's the same thing as like the literature... Like the normal literature world where it's just like you want to find a good book and then... 
you keep finding bad ones. It's just like, where is the good one? Where's the bestseller? Where's the true bestseller? That's the right <laughs> question. <laughs> These have all been bestsellers. What is the truth? But there's so much shit you have to go through to find the good one. Yeah. Because yeah. there's so much content just being produced constantly. Yeah. And yeah. so much of it is not good. <sighs> Give me good fanfics and I'll read them. <laughs> Give wow. Me, give me good fanfics that don't take forever to load. Or not to load, to like up, <laughs> update. update. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that would be horrible if your fanfic had to buffer. <laughs> waiting, waiting. What's going to happen next? Okay. Well, this has been fun, guys. Stay tuned next week when I just scream into the mic for an hour. It'll be great. <laughs> See you guys later. Bye. Thank you for listening to Bad Fan Fiction Fridays. To listen to more episodes, check us out on iTunes or any of your favorite podcast apps. As the title says, this podcast updates every Friday during the semester. Our multimedia manager is Allison Meyer. Music in this episode is from the YouTube Audio Library. This has been a Union Weekly production. Please follow us on Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at YouTube.